Consider a block kept on a inclined plane, 45 degree. Force required to just push it up is two times the force required to just prevent it from sliding down. See, as we discussed in the previous previous uh, problem, uh, which word is important here? Exactly. Just prevent it from, just push it up. Why? Because we know that if the block is just moving, then the value of the frictional force would be equal to the limiting friction or otherwise the maximum value of static friction or the maximum limit of static friction and is numerically equal to the product of coefficient of static friction times the normal reaction right okay now if the body is at rest it means that the value of friction is equal to the applied external force if the body is in motion, the friction force is less than that of the F external force and there is a significant difference between F external minus F of friction which actually gives the body some acceleration, right? Of course, this friction um, is now kinetic friction and not static friction. So yes, we do have this kind of uh, you know, understanding about this uh, basic concept of friction. Now let's see what's given in the question. So the question says that the body has to be pushed up, case number one, and case number two, the body has to be prevented from coming down. See, in both these cases, if we have to push, if we have to uh, make this block go up, you will have to apply an F external in this direction, right? Now, if the block is sliding downwards, and you want to prevent that sliding downwards motion, what should, what, uh, what should the, the direction? It should be applied upwards. So, in both these cases, so-called F external, F external in both these cases is along the same direction. It is along, it is against the incline of the plane. Right? So, in order to distinguish between these two F external, what we'll do is we'll choose the terminology as F up and F down. All right. And according to the question, it is two times the force required just prevented from sliding down. So F, F, F up is equal to two times F down. All right. So this is what we have. Now let us take these cases individually starting with case one. So, in case one, if we visualize the concept, uh, if we visualize the given condition, slope of inclination is 45 degree, the force is sliding, let me make use of the diagram, the, the movement of the block here is upwards like this, right, the block is moving upwards. Now, if the block is moving upwards, what do you think is the direction of friction? Exactly. Direction of friction should be direction of should be friction should be the other way around, which comes like this, right? So this is how friction should act. All right. So if this is the force which uh, vector which represents friction, let me draw it over here and represent as static friction. Why static friction? Could it be kinetic? No, because the body is just moving up, so the friction is still static friction. Now let us see the various forces acting on the block. Primary force is the force of gravitation which results in m into g. So weight acting downwards. Second is normal reaction which is acting perpendicular to the surface. Which surface? The surface here is the inclined plane. Right? So normal reaction acting perpendicular. And then we have the static friction which is acting downwards. Now the primary force of interest here which is which is force upwards all right now let us see the free body diagram so in the free body diagram we know we know that weight weight which is acting downwards can be resolved into two components one component which is parallel to the inclined plane another component which is perpendicular to the inclined plane one more time weight 
can be resolved into two components. Number one, the parallel component which is parallel to the inclined plane. The vertical component which is perpendicular to the inclined plane. The rest forces remain the same which is N, static friction and force up. Alright. Now let us apply, now let us apply the condition. So what conditions do we have here? Since this motion is restricted only along the horizontal, since there is no motion along the vertical axis. What do I mean by that? I what, I what I'm trying to say is this block is moving only like this. There is no vertical motion. It is not bouncing up or nor it is penetrating the plane and coming down. Right? Therefore, we can say that displacement along the y direction is equal to zero. If displacement along the y direction is zero, we can say that Py is equal to zero. For Ay is also equal to zero. And if you multiply m into Ay, what do we get? What we get is Fy is equal to zero. And therefore, sigma Fy should also be equal to zero. Now, what does it mean when we say sigma Fy is equal to zero? When we say sigma Fy is equal to zero, it otherwise means that forces acting upwards should be equal to forces acting acting downwards now in this case please don't get confused with this f up okay we have different let, let, let me write it full yeah okay now what is f upward here the only force acting upward here is the normal reaction so we have normal reaction n is equal to the only force acting downwards is mg cos theta so we can write it over here mg mg cos theta so what is the value of n n is equal to mg cos theta now let us come to the case where we have sigma fx right so when we study sigma fx here we know the case we know the case as the body is just moving up as the body is just moving up the frictional force should be equal to the the frictional force should be equal to the the static uh, so, sorry the maximum value of limiting friction or in other words we can just direct, uh, write it here that f forces acting along the right direction should be equal to forces acting along the left direction right now what are the various forces acting in the right direction along the right direction the only force acting here is f upwards which is equal to along the left direction what we have is static friction and mg sin theta so this becomes static friction plus mg sin theta but what did we derive static what did we know the value of static friction as the maximum value of static friction here would be coefficient of static friction times the normal reaction and what is normal reaction we derived it to be mg cos theta so we have f up is equal to mu s into mg cos theta plus mg sin theta now can you do the rest well you should be able to let us now have a look at the second case visualizing first horizontal inclined plane 45 degree the f external acting here is f external acting here is in the same direction but what makes the what makes this case different here the body is right the body is the body is trying to come the body is trying to come downwards and therefore what will be the direction of friction the direction of friction will be opposing the motion right now if you see the various forces acting on the block the first force is always the force of gravitation which results in the weight right and then we have the force acting downwards and friction opposing it normal reaction which is perpendicular to the surface which is this in this case the inclined plane now let us draw the free body diagram so when we draw the free body diagram when we draw the free body diagram we know that weight can be resolved into two components horizontal component which will be parallel to the inclined surface vertical component which will be perpendicular to the inclined surface horizontal component here is mg sin theta vertical component here is mg cos theta all right net direction of motion is actually not present because the body is still it is just trying to move however 
the body is tending to move downwards therefore static friction would be acting static friction would be acting upwards okay and the force applied here is also upwards why because only then the body will tend to move upwards when it is moving downwards okay now let us see now let us see the cases so as we did earlier we know that normal reaction here would be equal to mg cos theta now f left should be equal to f right f right we have two forces here oh maybe i should sorry my bad i'll just make a correction here this is f right is equal to f left okay so f right in the right direction how many forces do we have we have force acting downwards uh, sorry force to prevent the downward motion fd fd and then we have static friction sf which is equal to the only component acting here is mg sin theta is equal to mg sin theta now fd plus what is the value of static friction here the value of static friction here is the maximum value of static friction which is mu s into n and what is n n here can be written as right so n here can be written as from this value it can be written as what it can be written as mg mg cos theta right now what i've done is i've taken this value i've taken this value mu s mg cos theta to the rhs so which essentially means which essentially means i have written f downwards as mg sin theta minus mu s into n which is which is minus mu s into mg mg sin theta okay right so now we have got two equations and let us spend some more time to solve these two equations and things will become clear to you so we have fd is equal to mg sin theta minus mu s mg cos theta and f up is equal to mu s into mg cos theta plus mg sin theta now since theta is equal to 45 degree we know that sin theta and cos theta both of them are equal to 1 by 2 since theta is equal to 45 degree both of them are equal to 1 by 2 both of them are equal to 1 by 2 so in this complete equation we can make the rhs as a common denominator by root 2 in this complete equation we can make the common denominator as root 2. now it is given to us that f up is equal to 2 times f down which means this equation is actually 2 times this which will take us to which will take us to f up this equation being 2 times equal to this root 2 by root 2 is 1 now we have the numerators being equal i'll multiply 2 into the bracket so we have 2 mg minus 2 mu s mg if i take mg to the if i transpose mg to the rhs 2 mg minus mg is mg if i transpose minus 2 mu s mg to the lhs what we get is 2 mu s mg plus mu s mg which is equal to 3 mu s mg m by m is 1 g by g is 1 so essentially what we get is 3 mu s is equal to 1 and therefore mu s is equal to 1 by 